Welcome to the March 2024 edition of the Pre-Sale Pulse, a real estate show dedicated to everything happening in real estate across Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley. I'm your host, Susanna Gonsalves. Joining me today is our former Olympian, present EVP sales and marketing in the Fraser Valley, and future Mayor of Langley, co-host Brittany Reimer. I feel like future May uh, Mayor of Langley is an uh, Olympic-sized leap of an idea, though one cannot deny my passion for Fraser Valley and Langley. So today we're filming at the brand new presentation center for Frame by Peterson. This spectacular display is to support the launch of the Summit Collection in the East Tower. Yeah, so our team just hosted the grand opening event on February 24th, which was highly successful, welcoming hundreds of guests. Frame is very centrally located with thoughtfully and strategically designed one, two, and three bedroom homes that boast a wealth of views from downtown to Metro Town with the North Shore Mountains in between. Now we're looking forward to welcoming Ashley Judd, EVP Sales and Marketing at MLA, back on the show to talk about it later in the episode. So with that said, Suze, let's kick off uh, this macro outlook. We're fresh off some economic news. We're filming just a day after the most recent Bank of Canada meeting. Yeah, to be honest, Britt, I think we could have filmed this the day prior to the meeting and would have been very confident in predicting uh, what was going to happen. Yeah, this is very, very true. In some respects, the meeting was a confirmation of what we did already know and expect. Now, recent economic numbers are promising. The latest CPI report in January had a reading of uh, minus 0.1% that month. This is the first decline since May of 2020. At the same time, Macklin hasn't quite uh, seen enough to hit that cut button yet, which we've all been anxiously awaiting. Yes, desperately waiting for now. It's important that we don't overshoot these cuts as it was important that we didn't overdo the hikes. Although everyone in the industry, myself included, is eagerly awaiting the start of cuts, the last thing we want is for inflation to peak back up and for us to restart the cycle. We did see this happen a little bit last summer when the bank signaled the end of hiking only to do two more bumps. This added a lot of confusion in the market. Yeah, and stability in our marketplace is key right now. Stability really helps buyers, sellers, and developers alike make proper informed decisions and fuel activity and just mitigate risk. Yeah, and to be honest with you, paired with some of the other changes we're seeing in policy, um, stability would be a welcome scenario. Now we're seeing a similar story develop in the US. As mentioned, there is a tight relationship between our economies and rate paths, so we're always watching progress clo uh, closely. Now, after a brief scare in January that saw inflation tick up, revised numbers showed that it cooled to 2.4% down from the 26 in December. When that initial high reading came in, Brit, equity markets immediately dropped. This just goes to show that although we're close to hitting inflation targets, there's still a lot of nervousness in the market. The next Bank of Canada meeting is April 10th, which we will be sure to update our viewers on in the next episode of The Pulse. So, Suze, if I'm hearing you right, two key takeaways here. One, much needed and promising economic data continues to come in, including the first month over month CPI decrease since May of 2020. Uh, and we're seeing economic growth slow, meaning that rates are taking an effect. Now, two, the Bank of Canada held for March at holding that overnight uh, rate at 5%. The next meeting is on April 10th when another rate hold is expected. Now let's jump into pre-sale market, Suze. What are we seeing in terms of activity? Yeah, now we're finally starting to feel momentum pick up in the market. We predicted five projects would come to market in February and we've recorded six total launches. And how many units uh, were actually brought to market last month? Of the total 696 units within these projects, 590 units came to market and 249 units were sold. Uh, that's accounting to, for about 42% monthly absorptions. Um, now, 42% is a solid number, but let's consider the fact that Juno by Streetside Developments had the lion's share of these sales numbers with approximately 185 deals after launching in early February. The project received over 1,000 home requests after their preview period with particular interest in their one-bedroom and junior two-bedroom plans. Yeah, and of course that 10% deposit structure really must have been uh, an enticing uh, thing for buyers. We've seen a few projects begin to discount their deposit structures in order to amp up sales before the spring market, and it seems to be getting buyers at least through the door. Now, most recently, the Commons by Zentera, a wood frame project in Langley, has announced that they are uh, running a 5% deposit structure throughout the month of March. Uh, we'll be sure to keep an eye on this and other projects that are likely to do the same. Um, you know, when a project gets to a point in uh, its life cycle where financing is no longer necessarily uh, an objective for, for clients, they have more of that flexibility. Now, truthfully, 5% deposits make me a little nervous, mostly because I lived through 2008. But having said that, with interest rates as high as they are, values and timelines being higher and longer than they were 16 years ago, it's easy to see why these kinds of attractive deposit structures have made such an impact. 
Absolutely agree. Um, now, Suze, what do you think we can expect uh, this month in terms of launches? Uh, I'm sure more projects will be testing the waters as we get into the to the de the depth of the spring market here. Yeah, spot on. We are forecasting 14 project launches in the month of March. These projects have a total of 2,150 units. It's a pretty significant supply. Of these projects, we have two towers coming to Metrotown, Ethos by Anthem, which we will discuss in detail in our project feature segment, and we have Rain Tower 2 by West Group. There is absolutely no stopping Metrotown. Uh, interestingly, with the Rain 2 Tower, they are launching a unique campaign called the Ticket to the Top. Uh, they will draw one buyer for each unit type, including one beds, two beds, and three beds. Those winners will get a penthouse unit of their respective chosen floor plan. Since their floor plate doesn't change on the penthouse level, people who buy on the lower levels get one ticket. Those who buy on the mid levels get two tickets and the higher levels get three tickets into the draw. They will pick one buyer per product type and they will be upgraded to a penthouse unit of the same home. I actually really love the Wonka-themed realtor event. I'd say I quite like this whole idea as well. Projects are becoming increasingly more inventive to really differentiate themselves against the competition. They'll be able to recoup some uh, of the cost when they sell the lower home. And so really it's just the nominal per floor cost that they're putting towards a few lucky buyers versus increasing their purchaser incentive of five to 15,000 across the board. Yeah, and as the spring market approaches, this is a great strategy to generate excitement um, and drive interest before the environment becomes a bit more competitive with new projects. And after a somewhat slow start to the new year, new launches are pulling out all the stops to stay relevant and spur interest. Having said that, we have seen traffic and interest pick up in the last couple of weeks, which been, has been great to see. And we expect that March numbers are going to be a bit stronger than February. So to conclude our pre-sale segment, uh, we are experiencing more sales activity in February compared to the first month of the year, along with double the project launches. As we approach the spring market, excitement is starting to mount among buyers and industry stakeholders um, alike. Developers are awaiting the perfect moment to unveil their upcoming programs. Both actively selling and upcoming programs are offering different incentives, such as a decreased deposit um, and unique buyer draws, contributing to the buzz that we're really feeling on the ground in the market right now. All right, so let's dig into our project features, starting with Frame by Peterson Group. Now we're featuring the public reopening for Frame from our brand new sales gallery and the release of the Summit collection. And we have a special guest that is going to be returning today to speak with us about this exciting collection. Now let's welcome Emily Canada's EVP Sales of Marketing, Ashley Judd. You'll remember Ashley from last month's trending topic. We're welcoming her back. That must be a really good sign for Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and good for us. Actually. And great for us, especially good for us. us. And without further ado, let's welcome Ashley Judd. Hi guys. Hello. Welcome Ashley. Thank you for joining us. So well, the free sale Pauls. Thanks Brett. I am super excited to be here again and tell you guys more about this exciting program from Peterson Group. Now, welcome back. What can you tell us about Frame? Oh, so much. <laughs> uh, you may recall Frame initially came to market in 2022. In the spring, we had great success out of the gates with the release of the first of the two towers. So this is an opportunity where we're really calling it Vancouver's most connected urban center. And it's just incredible value for a Vancouver landmark address like this. The value was widely, widely recognized. We quickly achieved over 100 sales in market with the initial release. So the program features two 10-story concrete towers, as you can see behind me, um, offset by one another, which really affords views in all directions. So I think, as you said earlier, one, two, three bedroom homes, along with great new retail opportunities. And it's perfectly central to downtown Vancouver, Metro Town, and you're also in super close proximity to 29th Avenue, Nanaimo, Joyce, all neighborhoods with rapid transit and primed for significant growth. Yeah, great uh, location with the 29th Avenue SkyTrain station, only a 10 minute walk. Uh, residents are easily connected to Nanaimo and Joyce Station. And of course, you have Metro Town and its shopping center um, featuring more than 300 stores is just a 10 minute uh, drive away from here. That's right, Brett. Were you at my realtor event? <laughs> yeah, I, maybe. I'm always around. Like, that's the gooey joke, right? Yeah. <laughs> Another thing to note on the location is just the exact location of the site. So we're surrounded by uh, just zoning and low density to the north, which really just strategically allowed us to boast views in all directions. Um, you're looking to Metro Town, downtown, North Shore Mountains, and then you have the south overlooking Norquay Park as well. And to top it off, Peterson Group has this highly regarded reputation. They've been around since 1988. They formed many collaborative partnerships to bring to market some of the most iconic communities that span like Vancouver to Toronto, um, buildings like, you know, Woodward's, Fairmont Pack Rim, Shangri-La. 
um, many outside the development industry don't recognize the reach they've had in the community, but we're really finding it's just a significant reassurance and confidence for buyers in the market, particularly given the strain on developers today. Yeah, now you are here to share some insights into the recent public reveal of the Summit Collection. You certainly piqued our interest. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> Oh, only from you, Suze. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We had a great uh, realtor event um, in early February. We followed this with a grand opening event on the 24th. Both hugely successful, hundreds of agents and guests through. We actually had a lineup down the block for our agent event. It was awesome to see. People were really just excited about the launch of this collection. New homes coming to market, these views on the upper floors. Um, and it, it was an incredible response. The sales has really followed this. We've seen tremendous interest in upper levels with views and then our efficient uh, floor plans on some of the lower levels as well. The incentives that we rolled out for the Summit Collection, 10% uh, deposit or 10%, yeah, 10% deposit, two and a half percent incentive on all homes. Uh, really, really well received. As we know, deposits are a game changer in the market. Everyone's doing it for new openings um, at this time. And it's been so well received, we're extending it for a limited time. Those are some really great incentives, Ash. Uh, it seems obvious to me, but what is uh, attracting buyers to, to this offering at Frame? Oh, great question, Britt. And I don't want to sound redundant, but people are really loving the location. Um, it's this vibrant local community, tons of culture, central proximity, and transit's really a motivator for us. Also, we're finding that the views are somewhat of an unexpected feature that people haven't really realized until they visit the sales gallery. It's a big driver for our recent sales, particularly in this collection. And the floor plans, as I mentioned, they're a standout. The space is completely optimized. 99% of our plans actually have an additional den space. But for the investor buyer that we're seeing here, I think a lot of people are realizing that there's this amazing opportunity for appreciation with all the development that's slated to come in the Kingsway corridor. And then those looking at you know longer holds and rentals, they're comparing us to other markets like Metro Town. And there, landlords are competing with thousands of other landlords for tenants. So in this area, there's significantly less competition, which is just leaving a higher demand and much, much less supply. Yeah, I uh, not to add on to the location piece, but uh, we've had the opportunity to do a bit of work here in this sort of East Van pocket. And there's so many terrific local gems and I think it gets sort of overlooked by a lot of people but for the people who know they know how special it is and it's great to see um, uh, people starting to really understand what makes this location super great. Now in terms of amenities, Ash, what uh, what can home buyers expect? Oh yes, yeah. so 12,000 square feet of amenities, a fitness center um, and this incredible indoor outdoor mountain view dining area, green space. You actually have green space at an elevation here, which is which is awesome. It's kind of like your own park within the building and this entertainment lounge. Awesome. And lastly, Ash, how can we get a hold of uh, the project team for information on sales for yeah. frame? Yeah, best question. Uh, to book an appointment, reach the sales team at info at liveatframe.com or 604-260-5266. You can also visit our brand new presentation center where we are today. It's on the corner of Kingsway and Victoria, and it's open from 12 to 5 every day except for Thursday and Friday. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Ash. Looking forward to, to coming back and visiting the project with the full house. Yeah, come on, we're open. We'll be reporting in on some big sales numbers next month. Yeah, absolutely. no pressure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, thank you very much, Ashley, for joining us. A great overview on the Fame Frame project. We look forward to seeing how sales success goes over the coming months here. Yeah, excited to share it. And thanks for having me, guys. Hope to be back soon. Okay, back to just the two of us. Just the two of us. Oh, hey. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't think I you were going to sing on, know, the, on the show, but I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. All right, let's take a look at the latest concrete tower coming soon to Metro Town, Ethos by Anthem and Kingset Capital. Yeah, Suze, I find the exterior of this tower just so, so interesting. Initially, what catches my eye is architectural design and aesthetic of uh, over that overall building. Yes, Ethos stands 34 stories high and comprises of 218 condominium units. There's also a four-story low-rise rental building incorporated into the project. Yeah, and Anthem has done several projects um, here in the heart of Metro Town, but Ethos is located on the east side of Metropolis at Metro Town Mall on Marlborough Street, which is a bit different from their other programs. The project is situated between Kingsway and Imperial Street in close proximity to both Royal Oak and Metro Town Skytrain stations. That's right, Britt. The project is in a prime location and is set to launch this upcoming spring. We're seeing Metrotown continue to grow east towards Royal Oak and beyond, really connecting the two neighborhoods. A good time to buy along Royal Oak, I'd say. 
Now, based off of the released floor plates for levels 11 to 33, there is a range of units from 439 square feet studios to 1,034 square foot three bedroom and den homes. Starting prices start around 539.9 for studios and up to the mid to high 1.169 million for the three bed and den units. So that was yeah. a bit of a mouthful. Sorry. That That is a mouthful, um, quite a range of unit types uh, to that point. Um, I found it interesting that 34% of the release mix comprises of one plus den units ranging from 538 to 604 square feet. Of the currently active selling projects in that metro town, two bedroom units comprise the largest proportion of plan types followed by those one bedroom homes. Yeah, I think at Ethos you can see there was a concerted effort to include dens as much as possible in all of the homes. The den spaces are just large enough for a small desk and chair to give you that work from home option. Or you can, of course, use that for storage if preferred. Yeah, storage and office space is always uh, appreciated in homes. However, I believe there could be an added benefit in providing a genuine two bedroom or even a junior two bedroom option for those buyers seeking a bit more space, you know, offered in a one bedroom and den, but who might find the two bedroom plus den just quite frankly out of out of the budget. That's the junior two bed is just the sweet spot. Yeah, I don't disagree with the minimum true one bedroom size in Burnaby being a bit of an issue. It does feel that we very well may see more and more compact junior two bedrooms or true two bedrooms that try and keep the end price low, but give you a bit more utility than you could get with a 600 square foot one bedroom, for example. Yeah, spot on. It's all about finding that perfect balance. Um, although this isn't always an easy task, especially with municipal requirements and things like that, as we know. Yes. Uh, now, OK, switching gears, we have a townhome community in Burke Mountain by Polygon, Partington Creek as our next feature. The project comprises of 148 units and their first release contained 26 units. After selling out that phase, they released an additional 16 units at the end of February. This is really, really great news. It sounds like they've created some some buzz on Burke Mountain. Um, Suze, what can you tell us about the pricing matrix uh, up there? Yeah, starting price ranges from 1.1 million to 1.5 for three bedroom, three and den, four and den, and four and den and rec room townhomes. These are quite large townhomes ranging from 1453 square feet up to 2637 square feet with an average size of 2055 square feet based on their currently released unit. That is a larger than normal um, unit mix, Sue's. What other features are they currently uh, offering to attract buyers? Well, each home comes with that really important side-by-side -side garage and the project offers the famous Polygon resort style focused clubhouse featuring an outdoor pool, hot tub, barbecue area, outdoor dining, fire pit, fitness studio, games room, children's play area, and dog wash station. Polygon has been doing these clubhouses for years, decades actually, um, and they're always a hit with homeowners. The Polygon Clubhouse special, I love it. Um, I saw the renderings of the clubhouse and it really does look like a wellness uh, retreat here. It seems like there is something for everybody in the um, programming. When designing an amenity clubhouse of this type of size and scale, Suze, what are the, some key considerations that you can think of? Yeah, now it's not always an easy task. You want to first consider who your buyers are likely to be and what they would value most in the space. Additionally, exploring the nearby amenities available in the neighborhood will provide insight into what will really resonate with future buyers. What do they already have access to versus where are the gaps in the neighborhood? Of course, it doesn't hurt to check out the current market comparables and understand how you can really differentiate your space, differentiate your space as well. Love those tips, Suze. You're a master at this. Thank you for sharing with everybody. I was hoping you'd maybe just keep that a little bit to like MLA's secret sauce, but that's okay. We'll forgive you. If you're watching, more, more you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, well, it seems there's some uh, reactivation of activity in the market. Our program, Baycrest West by Woodbridge, recently hosted a highly successful event, welcoming many guests to get a sneak peek of the brand new display suite. The Baycrest West team are now showing large four bedroom homes and are offering a limited time incentive on move in ready homes. Visit livebaycrest.com. Uh, for more info. All right, let's 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 jump into the resale stats. Um, the sales momentum persisted through February and it marked the second consecutive month of growth. Yeah, sales increased month over month by over 45% when compared to January and on a yearly basis by 14%. We're still below the 10 year seasonal average though for sales in February by about 23%. But I was pleasantly surprised to see sales over the 2000 mark, which tends to make the market feel a bit more active and positive. Yeah, not only did demand increase, but the number of the total active listings also increased on a monthly and yearly basis by 12% and 16% respectively in Metro Vancouver. And when compared to the 10 year seasonal average, the number of active sales in February is 3% higher. Um, this suggests a revival in seller activity within this market. 
Yeah, this will provide buyers with more choices as we enter the spring market. Although, even with the rise in listings from January to February, the market has settled into a seller's market as demand um, has absorbed the new supply being introduced into the market. The sales to active listing ratio is sitting at 22% across all product forms. Yeah, inventory levels were just not high enough for that pent-up demand as price marginal uh, appreciation was recorded month over month. Yeah, and we saw a 1.9% increase month over month, and that's really not an insignificant n uh, number. Despite that, the benchmark price remains at 6.3% below peak values observed in April 2022. Well, that was two years ago. That feels like, yeah, a long time ago. We're ready to unleash. We are ready to unleash. We are ready to unleash. <laughs> to summarize, both sales and listings saw increases in February, although sales remain below the 10-year averages. Despite this, pent-up demand absorbed the new supply, leading the market to shift from a balanced state to a seller's market, uh, just barely though. Consequently, there were marginal increases in pricing on a monthly basis. We're going to want to watch this closely. I don't think we're fully on the other side of this yet, uh, but it's definitely nice to see numbers trending in, in the upwards direction. Yeah, and I believe that wraps this month's edition of the Pre-Sale Pulse. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our daily newswire, a daily email roundup of all the breaking news in the world of real estate. Yeah, thanks for joining us at the stunning brand new Frame Presentation Center. And thanks to Ashley Judd for some great insights on this program. Be sure to check it out and we'll see you next month.